So far in this course, I've promoted the benefits of a relational database versus a flat database in so much as it's a more efficient way of storing data. So I only need to store each supplier once in the supplier table, and I can refer to that supplier many times in the product table. But let's look at a potential problem. If I was to add another product, and I know this product is supplied by catering supplies to you. At the moment, I need to know this supplier code off by heart when I come to the supplier code field in the products table. Now, to all intents and purposes, this is not a very practical solution. If you had 100 suppliers, there's no way that a data entry person is going to know off by heart the 100 supplier codes. And even if they had it written down on a bit of paper, having to scour through 100 suppliers and look for their code just doesn't seem a very efficient way of entering the data. So we're going to look at a different way of creating the relationships that overcomes this problem. The first step is actually to undo the work we did on the previous lesson. So I'm going to go to the database tools tab on my ribbon and go to the relationships window. And although this relationship is correct between the products table and the suppliers table, I'm actually going to delete it temporarily. So I'm going to click on that line and then press delete on my keyboard. And it'll say, are you sure you want to delete the selected relationship from your database? I'll say yes. Now, the reason I'm deleting this relationship is because the next way I'm going to show you to set up relationships won't work if there is an existing relationship between the tables. So I can close this window. I need to be in the products table and I'm going to go to the design view. I'm in the supplier code field and essentially what I want is a drop down list of suppliers to appear in this field. So rather than having to memorize each supplier code off by heart, which is completely unrealistic, what I would prefer, or what I would prefer for my users, is a drop-down list of supplier names. So they can just select the supplier name, and it will automatically associate that supplier name with the supplier code. So this is how you do this. You go to the data type for the supplier code, and you change it to lookup wizard. The first step of the lookup wizard says this. This wizard creates a lookup field which displays a list of values you can choose from. How do you want your lookup field to get its values? First choice, I want the lookup field to get the values from another table or query. Well, that's exactly what we want to do. In previous lessons, we've looked at how to type in the values that you want to appear in a drop-down list. Here, we're going to pick them up from the suppliers table. So I go to next and I choose the table that I want to get the values from. So that's the suppliers table. So I go to next and then I'm going to choose the field that contains the values that I want to appear in the drop down list, which is the supplier name. I click on this button to move that field into the selected fields box. Then I go to next. Then I can choose the order in which the values appear in the drop down list. So I'm going to say by supplier name, and I can choose ascending or descending. Well, ascending makes most sense in this scenario. So I go to next, and there I can see my supplier names. Now let's just read this text at the top of the dialog box. How, why would you like the columns in your lookup field? To adjust the width of the column, drag its right edge to the width you want, or double click the right edge of the column heading to get the best fit. Well, let's do that. Double click. Look at this little tick box here. If I untick it, you can see that although I only included the supplier name in this drop down list, it's automatically included the supplier code, which, if you think about it, is the foreign key in the products table that will create the relationship with the supplier table. Now, although I don't want to show the supplier code in the drop down list, Access has correctly identified that this supplier code needs to be part of the relationship 
between the two tables. So I can hide that, but it is in the background there. Now I'll go to next. What label would you like for your lookup field? Well, we'll keep it as supplier code. And we're not gonna to worry too much about the other options here in this step of the wizard. Click on finish. The table must be saved before relationships can be created. Save now. Click on yes. If I go back to the database tools and I look at the relationships window, you can see that the relationship has been reinstated. I'll close that down. But now in the products table, I'm going to go to the data sheet view. And here we are, I'm creating my new record and I want to pick the correct supplier code. Well, now what I can do is I can choose the correct supplier from a drop down list. Just widen that column for you so you can see it. So rather than having to know the supply code, I can just choose the supplier name from the drop down list. We'll say this is just a normal frying pan and that's utensils. And I have a drop down list for that one. And we'll say that's 30 pounds wholesale, 50 pounds list price. And we'll say it was first sold today. If I do control semicolon, it will return today's date, which for me is the 3rd of July, 2020. And then I'll tab and it'll come down ready to start a new record. Okay, so in your database, I'd like you to do the same thing. Use the lookup wizard to create the relationship between the two tables, but also to give you that added benefit of a drop-down list of supplier names in the supplier code field.